man, we're just we're gonna have to put a moratorium on these comparison questions. But this is, you know, we're we're, we're digging deeper. I like they, it. Hey, like, man, they're number three in the country and they burned it. Yeah, Ray started us off, uh, and then Jonathan Cook took us to another level, and now Leo Nola's back. Technically, this is a 2014 question, though. It is, uh, yeah. but an alumnus, a famous person from that. This is this. I like this one though. And I think the answer is easy. Would you take 2014 Jameis Winston or 2023 Jordan Travis? Uh, Parenthetically, he adds Jameis obviously threw a lot of interceptions and we had a lot of close games. Uh, Leo Knowles' choice is Jordan Travis. I feel it's almost sacrilegious to say it out loud. I'm not going to say it out loud, but I agree with you. Mm. I'm not going to, you know, like I I don't want to say it, say it, but I agree with you, Leo Knowles. I'm not. Not uh, although I don't know, man. Like Notre Dame twenty fourteen, I, I mean, mean he threw was... a horrible, horrible interception in that game, but then was unbelievable. In the second, he half. was unbelievable against NC State. They had to, they gave up forty one points in Raleigh and won by two touchdowns. Um, he had some moments clearly, but he also had some really bad games. Florida was bad. Miami, he got he 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 wasn't good, and he got lucked into a touchdown pass on a, a ball that he threw right to a linebacker that deflected to Carlos Williams. But again, man, I'm not I'm not qualifying. I'm not riding the fence here. I'm not couching this. Ask me in a a couple of months, like that's, right that's now, though, absolutely boy. right now, I would take this Jordan Travis right now. But it is a long season, and Jameis, we have the we have the hindsight of 14 games that he played. He had some incredible games, and they won them all, mainly because of him. But then they also were in close games because of him. So I, I get it. There's a give and take there. But let's right now, I would take this Jordan Travis over that Jameis Winston. But that's right now through two games. October, November, December, we'll see. Pensacola Packbuster. Is the Miami game now tougher than the Clemson game? Do you feel we win both currently? Yes, yes. No, and yes. Oh, I I don't think it's tougher. Uh, I want to. I have to see more out of Miami, man. Like they they beat an A and M team that might be supremely overrated, um, and and quite honestly, maybe not all that well coached. Um, let's see how they do as we go on. It looks like their line of scrimmage is a lot better, though. That's it really the, does, yeah. um, and that is a difference. But let's see what it looks like. Um, I just think winning at Clemson, come on, man. That right now is tougher than Miami six, eight weeks from now. Man, this is this is uh the same Trevor Lawrence Clemson, man. This is not Deshaun Watson. I get your point. Um Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, they you know, I think it's the, weird. I, I think Miami matches up better with Florida State than Clemson does. Like I think Miami would on a neutral field or in Doak, I think Miami has a I think I think there's a chance Florida State could blow out Clemson at home. You know what I mean? If it got out of hand early and the club that kid just started panicking, it could get ugly, but you know, they're playing at Clemson. And I think, I think, so we'll see. There you go. There's the answer everybody tunes in for. We'll see. Pensacola pack buster. I just, I wonder how like loose Dabo's going to coach versus, I don't say more, but I think like my, I, not, I'm not scared of this, but I, I think Miami will probably like go out on their shield. I think they're going to blitz until they just vomit all over, all over themselves. Like, I think they're going to just play as aggressive and balls out as they possibly can to try to beat Florida State. Like I don't know if Clemson's ready to do that. Like you know, yeah. when Rocky was talking to Adrian. You know, like you know, to beat him, he's going to have to will, be willing to die himself. I don't know if he's ready to do that. Mm. Uh, I don't know if Clemson's ready to do that. I think Miami w- it would be. And the bummer about watching Miami right now. Which again, like I still think Florida State wins the game. They'll cover it, whatever the spread is. I, I assume right now, uh, but like you see, like Nigelic Kelly, uh, that Wesley Basanth kid, Ruben Bain. Like these are kid. These are kids that Florida State was heavily involved in, and like finished second to Miami on. And those kids are playing quite well with Miami. You just think about like, man, if they would have been able to get those kids, uh, you you know, you take away Miami's ability there, obviously, then you make yourself that much better. But you can't you know, obviously get them all. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Florida State beats both teams probably by two scores. So oh, there you go, there you go, Aslan. 
All right, Dylan, let, let me let me do this then. I'll read it for you. Two games, do you attribute oh. the lack of running up the middle more to the run blocking or the running back's decisions? I can read, guys. Sometimes it gets a little blurred. Um, I actually think it's a weakness right now, Tom. Mm. And that's what Bill Conley was referencing. Oh, he's referencing the offensive running game? Well, no, you're right. I've got that wrong. I've got that backwards. He should have been referencing that is what I meant to say. Yeah. Because I actually think that's something to reference. I'm not real sure that if we want to line up and run the ball uh, between the tackles consistently, that we're going to be able to do that right now. Now, we've also been banged up. Mm -hmm. We've had some guys out. It is the first two games of the season. Um, they had a game plan against Southern Miss where they just decided they wanted to throw deep. I actually went back and watched today, Tom, because I don't, I don't take everything Mike Norvell says as the gospel truth. Ooh. So I, I go back and look at it. Well, just save that. Anyhow, and I, I look to see what he's saying, and I went back and looked, and I do think their game plan was to challenge Southern Miss deep. I, do. I, find, that, I find that fascinating because just watching them, I did, again, the Alcorn State game. We talked about it uh, at Hotel Indigo on Saturday. You're going to be impressed with their defensive backs. They, they can handle one-on-one -on -one situations. They get downhill. They attack the ball. They look for the ball. But if you want to bludgeon them, you just run right at them. And, and, you know, I think some of this, to answer Dylan's question, for me, a little bit of it is they're not running into the favorable numbers because they're working on things. Like if Jordan Travis handed the ball off a few more times against LSU, I think that was a trust with Trey Benson factor. Uh, but then in week two, if he hands it off into four, you know, five and six man boxes, you know, Trey had nine yards of touch. He might have 15, 16 yards of touch if they decided to do that. But I, I think they were working on some stuff. So it, it remains to be seen, but the only real test you have is against a good LSU defensive front. So we'll see what they do against Clemson. Gents, thank you for keeping us informed and entertained across all your shows and write-ups. I've welcome. been really impressed by Briggs this year. What have you all thought? And who's a player that impressed you so far that maybe was a bit unexpected? You should brag about Briggs first. Briggs. Well, I will. I had him 20th. thought he would have a great year. I'm happy that he is, but I, I'm going to nominate somebody else because we already established that Briggs is doing his thing. Uh, I didn't think that Nicholson could get on the field this quickly and yeah. look like he belonged. Now, I knew. Because he didn't in the he, first week of camp. No. And he's undersized a little, although he's already he's, blowing he's up. He's getting bigger. He's getting yeah. bigger. Yeah. He looked bigger in uniform the other Bama night. Table, the I was like, Seminole okay, table. Storms, you're doing some things. Yeah. So I was impressed by that. But, man. All we heard about when he was being recruited was what a great athlete he was. He played running back and receiver and safety and all these other things, right? But the number one thing that I got excited about, because it's been my main bitch about linebackers, is that none of our linebackers covered to my satisfaction. And people said I was nitpicking. That's fine. That kid can cover. He can cover. He can run. He can diagnose. He can cover. He's going to be good. You can see it. Yeah, he's definitely going to be good. It's yeah. exciting. So he that's a good mine. coverage that's play mine. today. You guys nominate somebody. Uh, th th those are good. I think Briggs is mine. Okay. Absolutely. I think Briggs is mine. I think mine. I might go with Keandre Jones. I didn't nice. know of the eight guys. You know, they yeah. said they have eight guys of the eight. I didn't know if he was kind of like close to eight or nine. Um, but he's gotten in and I think he's played pretty well. And, and and again, just the fact that you have that depth to where, I mean, again, like this past week, Robert Scott and Maurice Smith did not play and the offensive line looked totally fine. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. It's a real good sign. Yeah. Uh, Fellas, writes Josh, how big is it that Lakewood legend appears to be turning the corner? Yes, he does. Two span. That's two games in a row that span, and as he notes, Spawn, Spawn according to yeah. Chris Fowler, yeah. has made big plays prior to garbage time. How many DCs are going to look at film of him and say, well, this is who you bring in when four or 14 are tired. I can't catch a break. So that's what uh, the BC coach, I watched his, what is it, Hefley? Hefley, 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 Hefley who's I, about to be fired. Himself. I watched yeah. his uh, press conference Which is weird because he seems like a good guy. He and does, I think he's sharp. actually a good coach. Yeah. He just can't get But he good. talked about the depth that Florida State has um, on the defensive line, and then he brought up the receivers. He's like, they, they take guys out, and then they bring in guys that are as tall yeah. and fast as the other guys. That he's had like, to they be... Just keep, so watching Deuce Span and being yeah. like, well, who is this? I was going to say, when 21 and 5 make those catches in the first quarter, you got to be thinking, man, come on. What are we doing here? I, it's You know, I've always championed my my Lakewood guy, but i got to tell you, man, Williamson making that catch and looking athletic as hell, yeah. I'm telling you, that's a really big development. Because God forbid Johnny has something where he's inconsistent to the point where 
you know, he's having to work on things. You need somebody else that you can put out there yeah. and feel good about. I don't a want it guy. to be at his expense. I'm just yeah. saying, like, develop that. More weapons, not less weapons. Right? Yeah, That's Darian's cool. only issue is just getting healthy because yeah. if you look at him physically, man, he is an oh, NFL he, wide receiver. Well, you could tell, Amazing. like, when he finally got healthy last year was the BC yeah. game, I and think. They forced and they forced him the ball. five catches for 100 yards. And then on his last catch, he, yeah. he basically essentially breaks his ankle, it looks like, and he's out for the rest of the year until the Oklahoma game. And then he's healthy for the Oklahoma game. Well, they make sure to give him right. the ball again. Yeah. Like, they know he's something. Yeah, and then do, it's just, do. it was a case this preseason where he just wasn't quite up to what they wanted uh, health-wise, and now he is. Two different storylines there, which I think are both rewarding for everybody involved. First of all, him getting healthy, catching a touchdown, looking athletic, hopefully stays that way. And then Deuce Span was so raw. The first time we saw him. You Not know, like he, Kenny Shaw, raw. No, no. no as no. in can't Raw play. like the real um, definition. As yeah. in we knew we could tell immediately freak of an athlete. I know he played quarterback at Lakewood. Yeah. And so, you know, he gets to Illinois, and they want to make him a receiver. He and his father don't want that. Then he has two catches there, and it's just, you know, Florida State says, you can come, but we want you to play wide receiver. So he gets here. The first day we're all out there to see him, I'm watching closely because I know he's an LHS guy. So I want to see what this is all about. And all I could think about watching him without shoulder pads and all that, it was how fast he was, how athletic he was. He's tall. He's all those things. And then we see him try to run routes. And you're like, hmm, this is – yeah. This ain't it. This is going to be a problem. It's going to take some time. But look at the work. Look at the buy-in. Yeah. And now dude looks like a receiver. Let's go.